Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and today I'm going to do a to-do list for what you can do during this second week of the expansion. Now, spoilers here, it's pretty much the same as what you could do last week. There are a few new things though that I've learned, and there are a few new things that are available this week. So in this video, I'm going to go over those things. But if you watched last week's week one to-do list and you're, you know, you've been keeping track of what's going on, you probably uh, don't need to watch this video, but still remember to like and subscribe and stuff. Anyways, uh, so what is there that's new this week? We have two weekly quests this week instead of just one that reward Renown. We have one to go into, or to get the anima, like we had last week. And there's also one to go and rescue lost souls from the Maw. Uh, and this will reward us not just with Emblems of Renown, but also with Redeemed Souls, which will bring us up to enough to craft that last Covenant building, the one that's Covenant-specific. Uh, so like the Trials for the Kyrian, or the uh, Garden for the Night Fae, the Abomination Factory, or the Crimson Court. Uh, and so that's something you can do this week once you've completed this quest. Once you do complete both of these weekly quests, then you will have enough uh, Renown to unlock Renown 5. And Renown 5 comes with another chapter of the campaign. And doing another chapter of the campaign will reward you with another rank of Renown. So that should get us to Renown 6 this week. That should be the cap for this week, uh, which get you a nice little cosmetic uh, available as well. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about getting this weekly anima because I feel like there's something, there's some ways to get good anima that some sometimes you may not be doing, you may not be aware of. Uh, so there's some weeklies available in Oribos, particularly underneath the inn. You see these little staircases over here uh, at the side. If you go down those into a back room under the inn, you can get two different dungeon quests that each reward 250 anima. Uh, so this is like a Sanguine Depths one and a Plague Fall one. If you haven't done the Sanguine Depths yet, there's also a quest in there that rewards 750 anima the first time you do it. So just by picking up this quest, going to Sanguine Depths, and doing it, if it's the first time you've been in there and you've never done that quest before, you can finish this entire weekly in one fell swoop. Uh, so that <laughs> that's a pretty effective strategy for doing this. Um, there's also a PvP weekly that you can pick up over here. Uh, so that's good too. One thing you may not be aware of, and that I wasn't aware of, is there's also a Theater of Pain quest you can get that is worth 750 anima as well. But unlike the Sanguine Deaths one, it has a short pre-quest chain. Uh, so this is in Maldraxxus. Let me see if I can just pull it up here for you. Here it is. Uh, so this is Theater of Pain Help Wanted. And in order to do it, you have to do even the most ridiculous requests, juicing up and side effects. And then once you're level 60, you will then see this quest as well, Theater of Pain Help Wanted. Uh, and it is found just up here in Meldraxxus in this little camp side area here. So if you want a little infusion of 750 anima, that can be used there. Uh, those are the, the new things with anima buildings and stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit now about callings, because callings are something that uh, people ask me whether these are worth doing. The answer is, eh, you don't really have to. They give you reputation. So if there's a reputation that there has a, there's a legendary memory you'd like access to, you should definitely do the calling when it shows up. Um, but other than that, they give, so they can give you conduits as well. They can give you high item level conduits for right now. They can give you 184 conduits. And that might sound like it's really worth doing, but in practice, 184 conduits are going to be rendered obsolete uh, in the next couple weeks, right, as soon as you can set foot inside the raid or Mythic Plus opens up, you'll be able to farm them at a higher item level than that. So I wouldn't worry too much about uh, doing the callings, particularly if there's one that's really annoying to do. But I would at least pick them up, and then if you're in the area, you know, these these ones, the ones that you fill up a bar, you'll just automatically complete these by doing, like, one dungeon in that zone on Mythic difficulty. Uh, so that, that, that'll really, uh, the, you know, it's just free, a little bit of gold, a little bit of rep, and a chance at, you know, a cosmetic item. Uh, or a uh, conduit. Now, cosmetic items you actually can get from those boxes. For instance, uh, let me show you. I got this this harmonious sigil of the Archon, which is the same color as the uh, as the one that you get from the Renown track, or the same model but a slightly different color. So you can get that from your callings too. Anyways, uh, that's what you can get from from there. There's also Stuff you can do in Torghast. In Torghast, we have different halls open this week than last week. Uh, we have the Fracture Chambers and Mortragar. And hopefully the last two that we haven't seen will be next week. And that means that if you have a Legendary that comes from Torghast, you hopefully should be able to get it. For those who don't know, Legendaries from Torghast are 100% drop rate from their uh, specific location, right? So like this one comes from Mortragar, Layer 3+. plus. As long as I do a run in Mortragar of Layer 3+, plus, I will get this Legendary memory 100%. But... If your wing isn't open this week and it wasn't open last week, you'll need to wait until next week, presumably, when hopefully the last set uh, of wings that we haven't seen yet opens up. 
Uh, so you'll go in there, you can do your layer 3s for each of them, you can just jump straight to layer 3 instead of needing to do layers 1 and 2, uh, assuming you've already done layers 1, 2, and 3 on a different wing. Uh, and then you're good. You're good with Torghast. Make sure that you pick up a quest, though, that's in Oribos before you go do this. Uh, and this is in the Covenant Picky area, uh, where you can you can talk to Bulvar, and he'll give you he'll give you a quest to go and free some souls from Torghast. And that rewards a little bit of soul ash, so make sure you... Make sure you do pick that one up. Let me see if I can show you that one. Uh, this one, Remnants of Hope, 100 extra soul ash. So uh, definitely, definitely swing by and pick this one up. I'm not sure if there's any problem if you don't do this one this week, but it might delay that whole quest chain by another week. This might be one of those quests where like a level unlocks per week. Uh, I'm not really 100% sure. Okay, uh, so that's Torghast. Another other stuff you can do once you're done with all that. Doing Maw every day, filling up your Eye of the Jailer. You can watch my video about how to min-max that. It's a good idea if you do want those sockets. Uh, we'll be able to unlock Perdition Hold pretty early this week for if you've been doing the Maw every day. Uh, and maybe if you've been Turbo Min Maxing it, you can start getting to these other regions of the Maw. Um, but it's not a big deal if you're... If you if you hate the Maw, you can just swing... Like, you just swing by, just do these two blue exclamation points every day, and you'll, you won't be too far behind, just a little bit. Um, compared to somebody who's, like, doing the Ultra Turbo Min Max... They, they'll get stuff a few weeks earlier, but it's not its not like it's the end of the world, and a lot of people really don't like the Maw, so uh, you don't feel like you are you have to do everything in here, but you should try and do something if you're if you're concerned about getting to those sockets, uh, getting to those random conduit purchase, uh, purchases that you can get from uh, from Venari, and also it upgrades Torghast, making Torghast easier, which may be necessary for uh, for the higher levels of Torghast, the, the higher layers when you're low on item level, uh, as those are opening up. So next week, we're going to get Mythic Plus. Next week, we're going to get... Torghast layers 4, 5, and 6, I think. Uh, and next week we're going to get Normal and Heroic Raid. So there's going to be a lot to do next week. This week is still mostly just about preparation for that. If there's some random cosmetics you want, you can go pick those up. Uh, some cool ones, for instance, there's like a little quest thing that you can do here where you have this, this cauldron that you throw different ingredients into. Uh, and depending on the ratio of those ingredients, you'll get these different uh, mobs as well. Uh, finding a group, doing this with them. There's a mount you can get out of this. Uh, as well, and there's a toy you can get if you kill all of them. Uh, so there's all sorts of things like this scattered all across the Shadowlands. If you don't have this add-on that's showing me what they are and uh, explaining, you know, how to get each thing, this is this add-on is really nice because it'll explain also like how to get the uh, different, like you know, to access this tower. You do a quest line, line, and it shows you also where that blue dot is in this cave to get that quest line. Uh, this add-on is. Handy Notes and Handy Notes Shadowlands, and it's really good if you're if you're going around zones looking for treasures, uh, looking for rares for achievements or whatever. Want to find ones that have mounts uh, or things. You know, you want to get there. There's an eye level two or 180 sword that you can get here, Sorrow Bane, 180 two-handed sword. So obtaining this thing uh, is something you may be interested in as well. You do need to wait for a world quest that shows up called A Few Bumps Along the Way, which is uh, not currently up on my map, but. Whenever that one's up, you can you can do that, and then you'll be able to go get this Sarbane two-handed sword. There's really not, you know, so basically I've been talking for the last minute about things you can be doing. None of it's necessary. Doing your Mythic Zeros, doing PvP if you want, you'll get items out of that, but you get better items next week. Next week's going to have M+, next week's going to have uh, Raid, and those are going to be higher itemable than anything you can get this week. So there's really not too much that is necessary to do. Alt leveling is something that's totally good to do this week, too. Uh... I'm going to have a video hopefully coming out in the next couple days where I kind of talk about the different speeds and different ways that you can level alts, uh, different pros and cons to each different strategy. So uh, stay tuned for that one. But that's another another good use of this week because next week that's when we will start kind of heating up with uh, more, you know, there's like, there'll be more M plus to do, more raid to do, and that'll start taking up more time for, uh, for I, I imagine for a lot of players, for a lot of players that that have been that spent a lot of time playing last week this week will actually be probably less intense than last week and next week it'll be a little bit of a valley anyways uh, that's my video on stuff you can be doing this week hope that there was something in here that helped if there's a cool tip that i missed for anima or anything like that uh, torghast uh, anything i forgot to mention that you need to pick up this week any quests like that uh, do let me know in the comments below Otherwise, check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash ratnos, and thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, all right, last thing. Last thing, I forgot about this. Uh, these guys, the ones that are spawned by your anima conductor, they actually reward this grateful offering currency, which is, uh, you use this for 
buying some cosmetics from the place. So uh, doing any of the, either the opening the treasures that your anima conductor reveals or killing the rares that are spawned by your anima conductor, conducting anima to a location, uh, will get you more of these grateful offerings. So if you if you care about any of the rewards from your covenant uh, that cost grateful offerings, I think most of it's just cosmetic stuff. Uh, then make sure to actually swing by and do those and don't just conduct the anima and, and leave. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Bye.